What model are you? Really? Okay, I'm just joking around with a meme that started yesterday when ChatGPT5 dropped. Lots of users were asking what model it was, and it kept saying it was GPT-4.0 instead of 5. But supposedly, that's been fixed now. And it says it's 5. But how do we actually know if that's true? What if it's lying again, and they just told it to always say it's GPT-5? Well, I guess we'll save that question for later. Now, seriously, as you probably already know, OpenAI did a live stream yesterday to present their new ChatGPT-5 model. And yeah, just like me, a lot of people were really, really hyped. But it ended up being a bit different than expected. First of all, I just have to say, the presentation honestly felt like it was done by university students. I'm not even joking. It was really, really slow and heavy to watch. And wait, before the OpenAI superfans come at me, Yes, I do think it's a good model, and yeah, it's powerful and all that, but there are definitely a few things worth pointing out. Quick clarification before we dive in. If you compare Day 1 GPT-4 with Day 1 GPT-5, the gap is real. The model you get on GPT-5's launch day is clearly more capable at reasoning, coding, and following instructions than GPT-4 was on its launch day. The reason it doesn't feel like a GPT-3 to GPT-4 moment is because the industry stopped shipping in big cinematic jumps. We've been getting capability drips every month. 01, 03, 04-ish thinking modes, 4.1, 4.5, experiments, deep research, agents. So by the time GPT-5 arrives, a lot of that leap has already been front-run. Now, what actually changed? Two things that matter for everyone, not just nerds. First, GPT-5 is a hybrid reasoning model by default. It decides when to think more and when to just answer. So normal users don't have to toggle thinking mode to get better outcomes. Second, the model picker finally gets out of your way. Most people never switched models and were stuck on whatever the UI showed. Now the default is just better. That alone is a win for the silent majority. Coding is the part they pushed hard. And it's where the upgrade is easiest to feel. The vibe isn't autocomplete with confidence anymore. It's pair programmer that actually plans. In the demos and in early hands-on, the model scaffolds small apps, iterates UI, handles errors it trips over, and follows multi-step instructions without spiraling. It still makes mistakes, it always will, but the ask-try-fix loop takes fewer turns. If you live in cursor or ship internal tools, GPT-5 is going to feel like less babysitting and more building. That's real progress. Quick reality check on the benchmarks. There are real gains you can point to. SWE bench, tool calling, instruction following. But some of those charts were a bit too cute. When a 69.1% bar looks shorter than 52.8%, trust takes a hit. The simple takeaway is that GPT-5 isn't twice as smart. It's more consistent when you let it think a little longer especially on code and other structured problems. Hallucinations do come down in several evaluations. Just don't expect miracles. The new idea of safe completions helps because the model tries to answer what it safely can instead of stonewalling, but a polite answer still isn't the same thing as truth. In health style Q&A and simple factual questions, you'll feel the improvement. In open-ended creative stuff, the usual caveats still apply. Pricing is the underrated win. API cost dropped hard, which is exactly why 4.5 never became the everyday default. It was too big and too pricey. GPT-5 finally lands in that capability latency cost sweet spot. That change is what unlocks real products at scale, not a cute Flappy Bird demo on stage. Where the launch fell short is pretty clear. Power user asks were mostly sidelined. Memory still feels cramped for serious projects. Sora didn't show the voice demo played like a party trick, and there was no convincing jump in image generation. Chat color themes are fun, but they're confetti. Integrations like Gmail and Calendar will matter when they're broadly live, not just promised on a slide. Day to day, you'll see two faces in ChatGPT, the standard model for speed and a think longer version for tougher problems. Free users have daily limits, plus and pro get more headroom, and Pro can lean on extended thinking whenever needed. The app should route you intelligently most of the time, so you're not playing model roulette. For developers, huge context windows are table stakes now. The API adds useful dials, verbatim controls, a knob for reasoning effort, and custom tool outputs that aren't forced into rigid JSON when freeform text is better. Small tweaks, real quality of life wins. Against the field, it depends on what you ask. On coding, tool use, and instruction following, 
GPT-5 sits near the top and often at a friendlier price than the heaviest thinking rivals. On open-ended AGI-ish exams, it's competitive but not always king. And that's fine. Competition is real again, which is why everyone is shipping smaller, faster iterations. So what is GPT-5 in practice? A consolidation of the O-series reasoning paradigm cleaned up and shipped as the everyday model, faster, cheaper, and smarter at code and complex instructions. If you came for fireworks, you were underwhelmed. If you came to ship more with less, you left happy. Measured against GPT-4's launch day, it feels like a big leap. Measured against where the O models already had us last week, it's a practical step forward with a major price correction. Both things can be true.